911, what's your emergency? We got a guy buried in the corn here, consolidated grain. We got the fire and ambulance on the way. Attention, Mount Carroll Fire Department, you're needed for a subject trapped in a grain bin. On July 28, 2010, four young male workers, ages 14, 15, 19, and 20, were inside a bin attempting to break up clumped grain and get it to flow. It started off just like any other day. I'd only been working there probably a couple of weeks, but I kind of knew the drill. We went up the ladder and um, we already had our picks and our shovels in the bin, I think tied off to a ladder or something like that in case, it, in case the corn was moving. Our job in there was to break up the clumps of corn that had formed because it was a really wet year and they were storing the grain in really moist condition and it created a lot of clumps and it made it so the corn couldn't flow. Well, that was our job basically to go around Un uncrust it basically to loosen it up a little bit and then just push it and keep the flow going in the center. Sumps were open and unloading equipment was running. 14 year old Wyatt Whitebread became entrapped in flowing grain. Wyatt actually blacked out or passed out or something from the heat. It all happened pretty fast. Wyatt was unconscious. He was flowing down and at first I didn't know he was unconscious. So I didn't do anything about it. He flowed right past me. He was getting closer and closer to the second um, sump that had been opened. There was quite a bit of grain above it, so it made like a quicksand effect, like a sinkhole. When he was passed out, I, he was sliding down and his feet got caught into the hole where all the corn was flowing and the, it started to flow up past him. He was flowing down towards the sinkhole, which we knew to stay away from, and he got into the sinkhole and that's when we were really screaming for him and that's when he woke up, he came out of it. Basically I was in shock. I got out, I told uh, one of the co-workers to call 911 that uh, they were stuck in the grain and it was a serious situation that they needed to get there fast. Me and Alex went in after Wyatt because he was trying to crawl out of the sinkhole and yelling for help and he wasn't making any progress. As, as much as he ran, as much as he climbed out, he was just sinking deeper and deeper into it. So we went in there and we each grabbed under his armpit and we started pulling him out. And we started sinking with him. Carol, letter 11 will be on route. Can you have a lifeline in the air until advised otherwise? 10-4. Go ahead, 18. Contact Stevenson County and requesting our high angle rescue team for this to respond and it is consolid green. Basically we arrived on the scene, first step was to figure out what kind of manpower we needed coming in. We had to have aerial equipment, we had to have interior grain bin rescue people, called in people from out of counties and stuff to get high aerial rescue teams in, just prepared to start removing the grain and do what we could to get to them as quick as we possibly could. And there was cars everywhere. People lined up on the side of the road waiting to hear what happened, just waiting to see if he was all right. After arriving on the scene, authorities notified Gary Whitebread that his son Wyatt had been involved in an accident at the grain bin. Gary called me and he said there was an accident. I was driving back to town and I just prayed the whole way that, you know, that it wasn't anything bad, that the boys weren't hurt or that you know, it wasn't too serious. I was praying that I'd get another call saying go to the hospital instead of the grain bins, I, but I didn't get that call. Tragically, 14-year-old Wyatt and 19-year-old Alex Pacas became engulfed and were killed. Will Piper, the 20-year-old, was rescued after six hours. I get out of the bin, I get out of this traumatic accident where I see two people close to me die. One, I feel his last heartbeat. That's gonna mess anyone up. After the rescue of Will was made, then it became a recovery operation and, and that lasted hours to remove the grain and uh, find uh, Wyatt and Alex's bodies and, and take them from the grain. The tone went out approximately 10.30 in the morning and we were not off scene till probably close to 12 o'clock that night. Later that night, we had a memorial for Wyatt, so we already knew what happened. That was a really sad time in our community. It's heartbreaking 
to sit at your desk and watch these stories come across day after day and know that they were all preventable, that this didn't have to happen. But because somebody sent in a youth or a child into a situation that they weren't ready for, those children, those precious parts of those families, they're gone forever. The Federal Hazardous Occupation Orders, part of federal child labor regulations, prohibit workers under 16 years of age from entering grain storage facilities. It is the position of the Grain Handling Safety Coalition that workers under 18 years of age should never be sent into any grain storage structure, such as grain bins, silos, or flat storage structures when there is grain or similar flowable product present. The only time young workers should be in or around storage structures is when they are empty, and then only if lockout, tagout, and other safety procedures are followed, and the youth must be at least 16 years old. It is also necessary to keep young workers out of grain wagons or grain carts and away from powered equipment when grain is being loaded, unloaded, or transferred. They don't have the capabilities. They're just not able at a young age to, to be able to handle these types of jobs, these types of disasters, because once grain starts shifting underneath your feet, it doesn't take long at all. It's a matter of seconds and you're engulfed to the waist, to the chest, and even buried. Working with grain can be extremely dangerous, even for experienced adults. Despite this, young workers are often given jobs working in or around grain storage structures and or transport vehicles. We worked for cheap. We did work that a lot of people were smart enough not to even do, and we didn't care. We didn't know any better. It was just someone told us to do something and we did it. Young workers want to please others and appear knowledgeable and mature. However, they do not yet possess the physical, perceptual, and cognitive abilities of an adult, so extra care needs to be taken to ensure their safety. You can put two 18-year-olds side by side and one of them will be very mature, physically stronger, be mentally more able than the one next to them. And so really, whether that youth is 16 or 18 or even 20, 22, 25, you really need to evaluate every individual worker as to what they are capable of. They still need training, they still need to be evaluated as far as what their job skills are, as far as what their maturity level is, and then you decide are they ready to do the job and if they are, do they need to be supervised while they're doing it. Training for young workers provided by an experienced and knowledgeable adult is vitally important. Young workers need to be taught about the hazards of the job, what is expected of them, and how to be safe while performing their work. Young workers also need to be trained on company policies and the use of personal protective equipment. We should have had a safety harness on for one. Uh, that way if something like that did happen we could have uh, pulled on to the safety harness and it would keep us above the corn. Um, but we didn't have that on and for that reason that's why Wyatt kept continuing to sink instead of having that constant pressure of holding them up. You need to be educated yourself because in Wyatt's case his boss was doing the wrong thing and he didn't, he trusted that, that everything was going to be okay and that, you know, I mean, kids always think nothing's ever going to happen to me. Um, something can happen to you. You know, you have to watch out for yourself and if you don't feel like something's safe or if, if you feel like something's wrong, you have to speak up and say, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this. Young workers need to be empowered to talk. They need to know that it is important to speak up if they feel unsafe. They should also be encouraged to ask questions if they are unsure about anything. Learning the safe way to work will help them recognize when they need to speak up and ask questions. They need to be trained on how to safely climb a ladder using three points of contact. And they need to know what the ladders should look like. If they have cages on them, if they don't have cages on them, then they need to have a harness and a lifeline. Grain bin and silo structures should be equipped with ladders that have ladder safety systems, ladder cages, rest platforms, steps, and handrails as required by current OSHA standards. Or a personal fall or rest system should be used. Employed youth who are under 16 years of age cannot work at heights over 20 feet according to federal child labor laws. They need to know how to use a lifeline and how to wear the harnesses. They need to know what personal protective equipment can protect them. They need to know that they have to have an observer with them if they do end up going into a grain bin. It is important for all employers to check and comply with all state and federal child labor laws 
and safety regulations such as those administered by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. Following recommended guidelines for young workers will help to ensure their safety while teaching them to be responsible, safe workers. Do your research, know the safety equipment that you have to have to keep you safe, to keep you out of a situation like that. That's something you do not want to go through. Young kids being in there unsupervised to cut some corners to save some money. It created a dangerous situation. People shouldn't be doing what they're doing with grain bins. It, it should be common knowledge now, but still, even after this has happened, every year there's been more deaths, every year because people don't think it's gonna to happen to them. If the employer tries to get you to do the job without the, your proper safety equipment, just walk away and tell them that I'm not getting in there unless I'm safe. If that's one message I guess I could give, it'd be someone's life is more precious than any amount of money. Uh, don't cut corners. Just take the time to be safe about it. I won't, I won't ever be the person that I was before this. There's just always something that happens. I mean, I can drive through town on the way that I came home that day and, and it just comes in my head. You know, I, there's places around town that I don't drive because I, that's what happens when I go there. The loss of a child is something that you just can't ever get over. It doesn't ever go away. <laughs>